Doing a restore with Retrospect is just as easy as doing a backup. If I click on Restore, Retrospect will give me a wizard that will walk me through the process, or I can simply use Advanced Mode. I can tell it I want to restore individual files and folders, or I can tell it I want to restore an entire disk. Source, in this case, will be Backup Set A because that's what we used for our previous backup operation. It will give me a listing of every single disk I've ever backed up with the appropriate date for the most recent backup of each of those disks. I click OK. I select the destination, and I can restore the data back to the original disk, or I can restore it to a new location. For safety's sake, we tell Retrospect to retrieve files and folders to a new folder. If I want to, I can replace an entire volume, and that will overwrite the entire disk and replace it with the contents of the backup. I can restore corresponding files, restore only newer files, files that are missing from the hard drive, or just files without any folders. In this example, we're going to replace file, we're going to restore files and folders and put them into a new folder. We click next, we go to files chosen, and we can actually pick individual files, we don't have to select everything. If it's a large list, I can do a, con a, a control F, and by going into control F, I can look for things like .mp3 or .dat and have it look for items that end with that file extension. Then Retrospect will locate in the list only items that end in that file extension. I mark it, I click OK, and then I click Restore. Now Retrospect will create a new folder on the disk with the same backup. So if we look on the C drive, which was our destination during that Restore example, I have a folder called Backup Set A. Inside the Backup Set A folder are the actual items that I had selected to be restored. If we return to Retrospect, we can see under History there's an entry for the restore. And if I click the log, Retrospect will show us information about the restore. It'll show us uh, what the source was, what the destination was, how many items were selected to be restored and were restored successfully, any error messages, and the performance. Retrospect also has the ability to back up machines on the network. If I go to Clients and I click on Add, Retrospect will scan my network and show me the machines that are physically out on the network that are capable of being backed up by Retrospect. These, these machines all have something installed called a Retrospect client. If I go to my control panels on my Windows machine, I will find my own Retrospect client for this computer. And the Retrospect client has a series of settings that shows us the preferences, notify after a backup, notify if there's been no backup after a certain number of days, allows me to set certain folders as, uh, as uh, private so they're not available to anyone else uh, on the network, specifically the backup administrator. Um, we can choose read only so that the machine is protected so that the backup administrator can't overwrite anything on the drive. Uh, I can add additional items to the exclude list. If I want to, I can exclude, let's say, cookies in ex as an example. And now Retrospect will no longer back up cookies, but if I remove that setting, then that gives me the ability to just protect everything on the machine except for cookies. So I have a lot of flexibility, a lot of options when it comes to configuring things. Retrospect will protect not only your local disks, but it can protect Exchange, it can protect SQL. We have an open file backup module, which will allow Retrospect to backup open files on individual workstations, such as PST files. Retrospect also has a series of preferences that are very helpful. Under preferences, we have things like notification, email notification. So if you want to be notified after a backup is completed, then Retrospect can send you an email. We can export a backup report. There's reports that can be exported. 
Uh, Retrospect does automatic updates, so every time you open the program, it'll automatically check for scheduled operations or for uh, uh, new updates to Retrospect. Retrospect also has custom filters. If I want to, I can tell Retrospect that I want to do things like exclude MP3 files. So I can have Retrospect include everything, but exclude files whose name ends with MP3. So now when I go ahead and I return to, let's say, a backup operation, I can change my selecting option to the one that we just created to exclude MP3s. Now Retrospect will back up everything except for MP3s. Also, if we look at our options, since we're over here under backup again, we can do a normal backup or a recycle backup, which will erase everything and start all over again. In addition to thorough verification, Retrospect offers a media verification, which allows for offline checking of the backup media, even if the source is unavailable. Retrospect also offers data compression, both in software and in hardware. So if you have a tape drive with built-in hardware compression, Retrospect will utilize that. If you do have hardware compression, then software compression will be overwritten. When looking at some of the other options, we can look at SQL, and we can see that SQL has some pretty standard backup options that you might be familiar with. Retrospect Exchange Backup also uses some very standard Microsoft options for, doing, for protecting your Exchange server. Other types of operations in Retrospect include staged backup or disk to disk to disk. One of the things you can do is go to automate and then manage scripts and you can create a new script and you'll see there's a lot of different script types but one of the ones you can utilize is a transfer backup script this transfer backup script and we'll call it transfer backup allows you to copy the contents of one backup media to another type of backup media so here's an example we can go to source but we can choose backup set A, which we used earlier to perform a backup. And then we can go to destination and we can copy the data to our Monday set. Or if we want to, we can create a new set. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll use tape again. And we'll call this offsite. And perhaps we might even use worm if we have a worm capable tape device. We'll call it off-site, click OK. And now what's going to happen is when I set up a schedule, day of week, we can say on Fridays at 10 p.m., we want Retrospect to copy the contents of backup set A to the off-site backup. Then once a week when this action is performed, Retrospect will copy only the new or changed items that have not already been copied to the off-site backup media. This is a very handy feature for protecting yourself against fire, theft, or some other kind of natural disaster that would potentially damage your business. This will now be incorporated into part of your standard backup procedure. Every night it will do a backup to hard disk, but then once a week, Retrospect will transfer that data onto a piece of tape media, which is easily taken off-site. As you can see, Retrospect is a pretty easy product to use. We can set up backup schedules very quickly, we can set up immediate backups quickly, and even do very fast restores. I think that you will find that Retrospect will be a great solution for all of your backup needs.